fields. They were sent to the country to the house of an old professor. The children of the professor almost at once, except for Edmund, who kept on going to laugh and had to hide in his handkerchief. After they said goodbye to the professor and had gone upstairs, the boys went to the girls' room and they all talked it over. We've fallen on our feet, and no mistake. This is going to be perfectly splendid. It won't nearly be as bad as I thought it would when Mom and Dad sent us into the country to be safe from the war. I think I'll enjoy our stay here with the professor. You're right about that, Lou. The old chap will let us do anything we like. I think it's an old fear. Oh, come off it. Don't go talking like that. Like what? In any way, it's time you were in bed. Try to talk like a mother. And who are you to tell me when to go to bed? Go to bed yourself. How do we all be going to bed? There's sure to be a row if we are talking like that here. No, there won't. I tell you, this is the sort of house that no one will mind what we do. And besides, it's about a ten minutes walk from here down to the dining room, and any amount of stairs and passages in between. Come in. Good evening, children. Good evening. There's so much fun. I have brought to your things. I'm Lee Margaret. Peter, Sue, Edmund, and Lucy. We are at your disposal. You may send your things by the bed. And children, while you are here, you can make yourselves at home. Now I'm going to tell you something about this house. This is a very old house. A very old house indeed. In fact, so old that the professor knows very little about its history. Anyway, I often get visitors come to see the house, and with the professor's permission, I show them about the house. And I'd be very grateful if you would care not to interrupt me, but while you're here, you can make yourselves at home. Good night, children. Good night. Good night. <laughs> this is a very strange house. <laughs> It's an owl. This is going to be a wonderful place for birds. I say, let's go explore tomorrow. You might find anything in a place like this. Did you see that mountain as we came along? And those woods? There might be eagles. There'll be stags. There'll be hawks. Badgers! Foxes! Rabbits! But, of course, it would have to be raining. Do stop running and catch one of the by morning. In the meantime, we're pretty well off. There's a wireless and lots of books. And besides keeping out of Mrs. McCready's way, there's a whole house to explore. The children woke up the next day ready to explore the professor's ancient house. They found many things, including lots and lots and lots of books, which Susan found a lot of interest in. They found a suit of armor that both Peter and Edmund tried to fit in together. Then they came to a room that had nothing in it but a dead blue bottle on the windowsill and an old wardrobe. There's nothing in here except an old wardrobe. Come on. I just want to have a look. Let me see, look. Check this room out. I'll be in the next room. I wonder what's in that wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not warm. This must be an enormous wardrobe.
Ferrari do Antônio e do Paulo. I would be delighted. That is to say, delighted. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Bob Thomas. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Thomas. And may I ask, oh, Dr. Reed, how you came into Narnia? Narnia? What's that? Why, this is the land of Narnia. All that lies between the Love Coast and the great castle of Caracarabelle on the eastern seas. And you have come from the wild woods of the west. I thought it was in the wardrobe, in the spare room. Oh, if only I had worked harder in geography when I was a little boy. I should no doubt know all about these strange countries. But it's too late now. I think you heard what you said all. It's only back there. At least. It is winter here, and it has been for ever so long. And a little boat catch hold of the stand here talking in the snow. Daughter B from the far land of Spare Um, where eternal summer rains around the bright city of Wardrobe. How would it be if you came and had tea with me? Thank you very much, Mr. Thomas, but I was wondering if I am getting back home. Oh, but it's only just around the corner. There'll be a roaring fire, toast, sardine, a cake. It's very kind of you, but I won't be able to stay long. Now, if you just take my arm, I shall be able to hold the umbrella of the boat Now that's the way. Now off we go. Oh, but 
horses, but what does she pay you for? Oh, that's the worst of it. I'm a kidnapper for her. That's what I am. Look at me, Dr. Hugh. Would you think I'm the sort of one to take a poor innocent child, one that had never done me any harm, and pretend to be friendly with me, and try to haunt my cave, all for the sake of loathing it this way, and handing it over to the white witch? No, I'm sure you would do anything of the sort, but I have. Well, well, that was pretty bad. But you're so sorry for it, I'm sure you will never do it again. Oh, daughter, don't you understand? It's not something I have done. It's something I'm doing now, this very moment. What do you mean? You are the child. I have promised from the light witch that if I ever saw a son of Adam or daughter of Eve before, I was to catch them and hand them over to her. And you are the very first one I have met. And I feel contented to be your friend and invited you home to my cave. All the time I've been meaning to wait till you were asleep and go and tell her. Oh, but you won't. You won't. And you really mustn't. And if I don't, she sure will come out. And she'll have my horns off, my beard pulled out, and my tail cut off. And she'll wave her horrible wand over my beautiful cloak and hooks and turn them into solid, wretched horses. And if she's extra, and especially angry, she'll turn me into stone. And I shall only be like a statue of fun in a horrible house until the four dogs of Car Caravel are filled. Thank goodness, not even that will happen. Or if it will ever happen at all. I'm very sorry, Mr. Thomas, but please let me go home. Of course. Of course I've got to. I see that now. I haven't grown the tunes like before I met you. But we must be off as quickly as we can. I'll see you back to the lab post. I suppose you can find your own way back to bed and walls roll. Yes, I'm sure I can. Come on. Can you ever forgive me for what I meant to do? Of course. 
I knew I wasn't wondering where I was. Oh, poor Lucy. Hiding in no one notice. Well, you'll have to hide longer than that if you want people to start looking for you. But I've been away for hours and hours. Fatty. Quite fatty. What do you mean, Lucy? Just what I said. It's a magic portrait. There's a wood inside. And it's snowing. And there's a witch. It's called Narnia. And I have tea with a bomb. You had tea with a what? Let's go have a look. Oh, come and see!
came into the wardrobe, Your Majesty. A wardrobe? What do you mean? I opened the doors and just found myself here, Your Majesty. A door from the world of men. I have heard of such things. This favorite all. But he's only one and easily doubtless. <laughs> My poor child. How cold you look. Come, sit on my sleigh, and we will talk. Perhaps you would like something hot to drink? Yes, Your Majesty. Good ones. Simply hate 
her. Where'd you hear all this? Mr. Thomas the farm, of course. You can't always believe what farms say. Who's that, though? Everybody knows that. Ask anybody you'd like. Come on. Oh, hey. You are awful. <laughs> Not mad. 
for the time being then, and until further evidence presents itself, we must assume that she is telling the truth. But how could it be true, sir? Why do you say that? Well, sir, for one thing, if this country were real, why doesn't everyone find it every time they look into the wardrobe? There is nothing that we look into it. Even Lucy didn't pretend it was. What does that have to do? <coughs> well, sir, if things are real, then they are there all the time. Oh, ah. But there was no time. Lucy had no time to have gone anywhere. Even if there was such a place, she came running out just the moment we left the room. It was less than a minute. She pretended to be away for hours and hours. Oh, but don't you see? That is the very thing that makes her story so likely to be true. There is a door in this house that leads to another world. Now I should warn you, it is a very strange house. Even I know very little about it. But as I say, if she had got into another world, I should not at all be surprised if it had a separate time, all its own, so that no matter how long you spent there, it would take up none of our time. And besides, I don't think many girls her age would invent that idea for themselves, no. If she were pretending, she would have stayed hidden for a reasonable time before coming out and telling her story. But do you really mean, sir, that there could be other worlds all over the place, just around the corner like that? Young man, nothing is more probable. But what are we to do? Do? Why must you do anything at all? Now, I have some advice for you both. What's that? Be patient. You see what develops. Judge nothing before the time. Thank you, sir. The dance. Be 
bearing a bit more to the left. That is, if we're aiming for the lamppost. Lamppost? So you really were here at that time when you said she met you here. And you were making out that she was telling lies. Full of all the poisonous things to do. Pay you back for this pack of stuck-up self-satisfying priest. <laughs> Where are we going, anyway? I think Lou ought to be the leader. Goodness knows she deserves it. Where will you take us, Lou? What about Mr. Thomas? Mr. Thomas? He's got no spy I told you about. So Lucy led them to my grandfather, Mr. Thomas's house. All the while, the remembrance of Turkish delight and the desire to eat more of it was gnawing at Edmund's stomach. As he trudged along behind the others, he was figuring out a way to convince them to go with him to the witch's house, the queen's house as he called it. His schemes kept growing, even when they caught sight of Mr. Tennant's home. Empress of the Lone Islands, etc., also of comforting her said majesty's enemies, hungering spies, and fraternizing with humans. Signed Margaret, Captain of the Secret Police, Long of the Queen. Who is this queen, Lucy? She's not a queen at all. She's a horrible witch. A white witch. But the good people simply hate her. She's made an enchantment over the whole country. That is always winter and never Christmas. I I wonder if there's any point of going on. I mean, it doesn't seem particularly safe here, and it doesn't look like it's going to be much fun either. And besides, it's getting colder every minute, and we've got nothing to eat. What about just going home? But we can't just go home. Not after this. Don't you see that it's all on my account that the poor father got into this trouble? He hid me from the witch and showed me the way back. That's what her means by comforting Queen enemies and fraternizing with humans. We simply must try to rescue him. What we could do. I think Lucy is right. What do you think, Susan? A horrid feeling that Lucy is right. I had wish she'd ever come. But I still think we should try to do something for Mr. Whatever his name is. I mean the farm. But I'd rather talk about it outside and not in this mess. Come on, Lou. What is it? Not so loud. Don't be frightening girls. You're not so too high and mighty to talk to me. I've got something to say, which you better listen. What? Do you realize what we're doing? We're going to rescue someone. We don't really know. He could be leading us into a trap. That's a nasty idea. Anyway, it's pretty obvious that the fawn is in the right. If it comes to talking about sides, how do we know that the fawn is in the right and the queen? Yes, I know we have been told she is a witch. Is in the wrong. The fawn saved Lucy. He said he did. How do we know? And another thing. We haven't the least idea of the way home. Great Scott. I hadn't thought of that. And no <laughs> chance of dinner. I don't know. There's an animal outside watching us! But it doesn't want to be seen. It doesn't need to talk to us. Alright, stay behind you. I saw its tail. Well, at least we'll be matched for one beaver if it turns out to be an enemy.
summer fig trees, peach trails, chip curve. You know what I mean. Constant talking about size. How do we know that you're a friend? Not meaning to be rude, Mr. Beaver. But you see, we're strangers. Quite right, quite right. Here is my tool. My handkerchief! The one I used to perform with your tummy! Poor fellow. He got pregnant with the rest before that even happened. Then handed it over to me. He said that if anything happened to him, I must be to him. And bring him to you. To this So Mr. Beaver and the four children set off for the Beaver's house. They trudged for a city like hours when they came to a dam set in the middle of a frozen river. There was smoke coming out of the chimney, and altogether it looked like a cheery, homey place. Mrs. Beaver, we're here. I found it. Oh, it's not the matter. And the dog is a bee. Oh, dear. It's my stomach and nose. I'm Peter. Oh, welcome, Peter. And Lucy. Oh, welcome, Lucy. And Susan. Welcome, Susan. And? And this is Edmund. Oh, welcome, Edmund. <laughs> 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 the food was delicious. Make yourselves at home.
But how did we fit into all this? That's another old lie. When Adam's flesh and Adam's bone sit at care parallel in throne, evil times will be over and done. You're the person to the throne will come to Narnia. But what about the queen and the dwarf? You need the witch and the dwarf. She'd like you to believe she's human, but there's not a single drop of real human blood the witch. She's evil all through. But this character of value mentioned, how many stars are there? That's where you come in. If she knew there were four of you, your lives would be worth a shake of my whiskers. <laughs> I say, where's Edmund? Who's on last? Edmund! Edmonds! Where'd he go? Edmonds! Edmonds! Was he here when I talked about Aslan? Well, yes, he was. Remember, he asked if the wind could turn Adam into snow. So he was. We'd better leave here. We must divide into four search parties. Everyone go in different directions. What for? We already know what he has got. He's got the car. He has betrayed us all. As soon as he tells her we're here, she'll come and catch us. But Mr. Beaver, how do you know? <laughs> Tell me this. Has your brother ever been to Narnia before? Has he ever been here alone? Oh, yes, he has. And did he ever tell you where he had been or who he had met? No, he didn't. Mark my words, man. Your brother has already met the witch and has tasted her food. I didn't like to mention it before. Him beating your brother and all. But the moment I laid eyes on that boy, I said to myself, I said, Treacherous. Something about the eyes. You could always tell. Keep that eyes. the But what are we to do, Mr. Beaver? There's no time to lose.
and to be a lot nicer than that softball as the <laughs>
stay here. But won't the witch catch Mr. Beaver? No, dears, don't worry about Mr. Beaver. He knows how to keep us safe. He'll be back before long. It's all right, you can come out. It's not the witch. Well, there isn't the no witch. Who is it? Hurry, hurry, friends. What? Hello, hello, hello. Who is it? It's a dwarf, I think.
fall behind. Don't! Oh, don't! Please, don't! As for you, let that teach you not to save us for spies and traitors. Try go on! <laughs>
Sir Peter Wolfsbane. And whatever happens, never forget to clean your soul. Yes, sir. And now, let us return to the, the pavilion and wait for the others. If all goes well, they shall return with your brother.
Here is your brother, and there is no need to talk to him of what has passed. I'm sorry, Luke. That's all right, Edmonds. Susan, we're glad you stayed, Peter. I'll come back to you. Look, someone's coming! <laughs> Must we prepare, prepare for battle? Oh, oh, we shall see. Look, the intruder carries white flag. Sorry, the messenger from the enemy creates audience with you. Let him approach. You appear to come in peace. What is your message? The Queen doesn't know I'm on him. Desires to sit calm and next time to speak with you. Queen of Narnia Deep, of all a cheek. Yes, Beaver. Tell your mistress that I will grant her safe conduct on one condition that she leave her wand behind at the Great Oak. The magic sheet. Aslan, you have a traitor there! His defense was in no way against you. Have you forgotten the deep magic? Let us say, I have forgotten it. Tell us of this deep magic. Tell you, tell you what has written on that very table of stone which stands behind us. You know the emperor, the magic, the emperor put into Narnia at the very beginning of time. You know that every traitor belongs to me. And that for every treachery, I have the right to kill. Against the witch. But 
you will be there yourself, won't you? I can make no such promise. You must get a good night's rest to be ready for what tomorrow might bring. Go at once.
the feet are put right, the rest will follow. Before nightfall, we must join the battle. Join the battle, I hope, sir. Of course. Look lively. Off we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
And now, let the poor nation begin!
Yes, they will return someday. For once, a king or queen in Narnia, always a king or queen in Narnia. This may be the end of the adventures in the wardrobe, but it is only the beginning of the adventures here in Narnia. <laughs>